You know, Nation, if this was like eight years ago, I'd probably be really, really excited for what I'm about to do. But it's not. It's 2011, and it's time to review a Children of Bodom record, their newest one, Relentless Reckless Forever. Now, if you don't know who Children of Bodom is, and you're a metal fan, well, where the fuck have you been? Quite literally, actually. These are a, a group that have been steadily rising in acclaim, and has become beloved by the younger metal population ever since the early 2000s. However, for people like me, old school people like me, uh, this is a band that's been around since the mid-1990s, and uh, impressed us during a nice period between about 1997 to 2003, but since then has really fallen off of the plane of reality as though gravity itself has destroyed itself and caused them to fall into some sort of astronomical nether region where everything they think they can do is gold whenever it really is nothing more than decorated colored easter egg shit. Is that enough of a description for you? Okay, well... I'll go a little bit deeper and I'll do it in musical terms this time around. This is a band that is comprised around Alexi Lejo, who is the lead vocalist and the lead guitar player. He's, of course, known for his impressive soloing ability, not to mention his harsh vocals. Uh, this is a band that is, well, self-righteous in a way, where they say that they're just a heavy metal group. Some people would label them extreme. Some people would call them Gothenburg. They have uh, power metal, neoclassical, a bunch of different metal uh, influences within their work. However, whatever you just want to put it, a simple ring on it. Just call it heavy metal or just call them bottom metal. Yeah. Now, as I said, the very first couple of albums were a little bit more impressive. Uh, the last couple, uh, Are You Dead Yet? and Blood Drunk, not so much. What's been the reason behind this? Well, let's find out if Relentless Reckless Forever fits this mold first and then we can get into that. Oh, wait. I kind of just segued because it does. Yeah. Nine tracks, 36 minutes long, and it definitely falls in the same mold as Are You Dead Yet and Blood Drunk, which if you're a newer fan and these are the two albums that you've heard the most recently, or the only two that you've heard, you're going to rejoice, because if you already love this band, you're going to love them even more for this particular record. However, for those of us who are a little bit more old school, those of us who really embrace that old sound that they had, back whenever they were using producers such as Peter from Hypocrisy, for example, and didn't sl uh, simplify and streamline their sound a little bit as they had on the last two albums, this is going to be another 36 minutes of decorated, unadulterated hell. Yes, unfortunately with these past couple of albums, this new one, Relentless, Reckless, Forever included, sound is definitely a lot more simplified. There's a little bit more of a lacking here. There's one thing that I will say that is absolutely quintessential about the first couple of COB records, and that's the fact that there's a lot of songs on there that you can definitely remember. A lot of memory can be served from the songs on these particular records. You'll remember their names. You'll remember how they go. You'll hum them in your head, and you'll want to listen to them over and over again. And I'll even... I'll even use some names just for an example, such as the self-titled Children of Bodom, such as Hate Me, such as Triple Corpse Hammer Blow, such as Six Pounder, such as Angels Can't Kill, such as blah 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 blah. These last couple of records, on the other hand, not so much. Not so much. In fact, off of these past three records, there's only one song, only one simple track that I can remember, and really would go back and listen to on a regular basis, and that is the song, If You Want Peace, Prepare for War, off of Are You Dead Yet? Unfortunately, Relentless Reckless Forever is much like Blood Drunk. It boasts no songs that I recall, no, bo no uh, songs that I really want to recall. Most of this is just kind of watered down, simplified crap. Basically, the best way that I can uh, describe this is as such. Let's say that you have a DVD collection. Let's say that you have over 2,000 DVDs. You bought a DVD, it's one of the first in your collection, one of the first five that you ever got. You watched it once, you enjoyed it, but as you built your collection, it just stays there on the shelf. It's collecting dust. It's not doing anything. It's just sitting there. It's waiting for you to bring it out and, you know, <laughs> fucking watch it again. Then whenever you finally do that a couple years later, you come out, you know, you bring it out. There's a lot of dust on it. Maybe there's a little spider behind it or something like that. <sighs> Blow off the old dust, pop it back in. Well, the movie's the same as it was before. That's kind of what this is like. It seemed like as they kind of streamlined and simplified their sound, they just kind of felt like what they were doing was good enough. They really didn't need to innovate any further. In fact, 
if you really want to be truthful about it, they, they de-innovated or de-evolved, so to speak, with their streamlined, simplified uh, sound that they were able to uh, micromanage, I suppose, into their, into their subculture. And this is something that is very disheartening because this is a band that was mindlessly and wildly creative. It was something that was uh, very unique to the metal scene back in the late 90s, early 2000s, back whenever I was first getting into metal, man. I was excited about this band. I was excited to see where their career was going to go. But if I realized that at that particular point, I was at the height of the roller coaster, that the escalator had made it to the top floor and it was only downhill from here, well, I wouldn't have given a shit back then because I don't give a shit now. Let's face it. This is an album where it's 36 minutes long. It's very short. It's not even... It, it, it's a sitcom and five more minutes, uh, so to speak, or six more minutes. And you know what? I would rather watch a sitcom because this album seriously got extremely boring after about four or five tracks. It really took... A real endeavor in order for me to listen to this all the way through. And whenever I'm saying that about a metal record, especially one from a band that's supposed to be one of the highest of the high in the genre, Children of Bodom, that's not a good sign. Well, I think there's only one way to take care of this, and that's to take care of this the right way, the cover killer way. Alexei, guys, you guys need to take a nice hard look in the mirror because this stuff that you've been putting out these last three albums really not working out for me. Children of Bodom might have a new release coming out in the next couple years, and Cover Killing Nation just may not cover it because I really don't care. This really has let me down for the third straight album I've been let down. Are You Dead Yet was kind of a minor disappointment, figured it was just a flub in the plan, a skip of the bump in the road. Then Blood Drunk came out, and I was just like, wow, this is getting really, really, really fucking bad. Now, this came out, Relentless, Reckless, Forever. I'd rather listen to Chinese Democracy by Guns N' Roses. I'd rather watch or listen to Lars Ulrich backmasking the entire typo negative, Three Days Grace, and Bullet From My Valentine discography on mute, but then raised up to 10, then back on mute, then back up to 10, through a trash can with a metal lid while a dog is taking a shit directly on to Sir All About Music's chest. If you guys don't know who Sir All About Music is, well, that's probably a good thing. Needless to say, Relentless Reckless Forever is probably better termed as this. Boring, retarded, for life. Was not impressed with this release. This is definitely one that does not get my seal of approval whatsoever. There are packages for this album that may eclipse $100 if you really want it. If you really love this band that much to get a t-shirt and a bunch of other cool shit, you can buy one. It's like 120 bucks. If you want to do that, go right ahead. But let me tell you, the original version, the version that's just going to be, here, have the motherfucking album and enjoy it, it's going to be $9.99. And that's $10, it's going to stay right in my pocket, right where it belongs.